open. So let's start with some breathing. Let's dip down, take the breath from the earth, bring it up. Reach for the sky and expanding out into the world. And reaching out through the walls. Opening. Let's work with our containment breath. Now let's just wake everything up a little bit. Let's start with our core. Let's, I like to do the legs. Arms. And I think it's nice to wake our head up a little bit, get a little energy going in that. And let's go back down to our core again. Mind's always good. All right, and let's put our hands over our hara point and just stand for a moment. Concentrate into our hara point. And then let's begin to move from there. And having a sense of the energy radiating, flowing out through our arms and fingertips, drawing from the earth, from the sky, and radiating out into the world, expanding, flowing benevolent power. And then without any effort, invite a little more to come through. Let it get a little brighter, a little stronger. Nice, and let's stop for a moment and just stand in it and just notice the feeling of energy or life all around us. Good, let's stretch our sides. And let's go all the way around three times. And let's reverse at the bottom. All right, let's stretch our low backs by dropping in a shoulder, stretching the low back, twisting around. And then breathing to set into center and exhaling to the other side. And again. Okay. Let's do circles with our hips. In both ways. And let's do our knees. In both ways. Stretching the backs. And if you're comfortable with the squat, stretching the front. 
in, stretching the back and the front. Okay, stand in harmony and we'll do our Ikkyo stretch. And settling down, lengthening up, strong hips opening our hearts. Nice, other side. And settling down and softening around the stretch. Good, Kargaish. Oh, lightening up as we soften around the stretch. And Nikio. Softening, staying light. Oh. And now let's stretch the inside of the arms. And the other side. And let's shake them out. And then let's shake them over our heads and really work it so that our, we can feel the shaking in the toes and the feet and the legs. Really moving everything. Drop them three times. And again, really work that shape all the way through the legs, the ankles, the feet, the toes, top of the head, everything vibrating, shaking, waking up and drop them three times. And let's do big circles. And shoulders. And then this little working our whole core, having everything flow and move. Nice. Let's take our triangle shape. Up. Nice settling down and extend way out through the arms and fingertips. And let's go together and back, together and back, together and back, together and back. And as we do the movement, have a sense that Aiki spirit or a breeze is flowing from our backs through our arms and fingertips out into the world. Have a sense that the earth is coming up into our bodies. The sky, heaven energy is coming down into our bodies and we're just filled with Aiki spirit, with benevolent power. And it's flowing through us from heaven and earth, from our backs out into the world. Imagining our arms are hollow and there's lots of room for key. Think of it as light, liquid, stardust. A few more, sending it out. Nice, and hold. And let's just stand in it for a moment and then keep the feeling of the triangle. When we need to assert ourselves, we need to do an action, that triangle is the feeling we want to be able to call on. Okay, now we're going to do the circle, which is our two step. And one, two, one, two. As we move, have a sense that there's a wind at our backs helping us move. He is flowing through our arms and fingertips like light or water. There's energy coming from above, running through us and from below. Just the feeling that we're not so solid, that we're filled with life force, with key. Think of it as light, energy. 
concentrating on the space around us, just the sense that space is actually moving us. A couple more. Okay, let's do one more and stay. I'm standing it. <sighs> just that feeling of life all around us running through our bodies. Good. So now we're going to do a little rowing. So let's just do the um, sword blade rowing. So keep that nice sense of lightness and that sense of connection to the earth using our legs. Let's send the energy out and gather it back. Send, keep a nice straight posture, shoulders down. And have a sense that your sword blade is really filled with energy. And the whole, from the elbows to the little fingers, energy is flowing out. And then you gather it back, using your legs to power it. And invite a little stronger energy. Really work, work the feeling of sending energy way out and gathering it back. A few more. Okay, and let's reach up and take some key from the sky, bring it down, and vibrate our whole body, concentrating into our hotter point. Focus into our hotter point, long exhales. Okay, stop for a moment and then just concentrate. Notice the feeling of vibration still continues. Let's do the other side, other hominy. Same feeling, sending it out, gathering it back. Your whole sword blade is energized from your elbow to your little finger. Shoulders are relaxed. Legs are your power. Try to pick a point or imagine a point way out or through the wall and send it out to there. Gather it back. Bring the energy from the earth. Bring it from the sky. Invite a little more power to come through, benevolent power. Okay, one more time, let's reach up. Take some energy from the sky, bring it down to our hara. Vibrate it. Have your good concentration focusing into your hara point. And stop for a moment and then just stand in that. Sense the vibration continues very subtly in your body and around you. Okay. So this evening, um, thanks to Elizabeth and her suggestion, her question, um, which I will read, um, the theme is uh, tenderness. <laughs> so um, if I may, I'm going to read a little bit of Elizabeth's uh, message to me, which I think is really interesting. Um, I won't read all the details, but she was talking about um, when she was training with her teacher and she couldn't move him. And one of the things he said is, um, touch me like you would hold the baby. And although she said, I thought it was kind of weird and new agey, when I tried it, um, there's a particular quality in your hands when you hold a baby. Your hands are open because you can't squeeze it. Um, and you're super alert. You're taking care that the baby doesn't drop. And you have to extend the right amount of energy and strength to carry it. So she was contemplating um, from her message uh, that when she noticed the connection of her hands, um, it was a quick way of centering. 
that just paying attention to her hands, which I thought was really great. And then she mentioned she was looking for what's the quality she wants to bring to it. And then she told that story about her teacher. So I started looking at uh, tenderness because that's a quality I associate with holding a baby. And I realized um, there's a power to tenderness. Uh, so I'm gonna read you some quotes that I dug up and then we'll look at um, that. This is one from Ira Rob Boyes. Um, he, and he asked the question, how do we bring tenderness to our actions? How does acting with tender, tenderness toward others affect how we feel in ourselves? He goes on to say, when we greet someone or something with kindness or tenderness, with a full moment of attention, we feel great. The other person certainly feels our presence, but so do we feel present. We feel more alive and cherished. And then he said, I never feel stronger than when I feel tender. I never feel more alive or worthwhile. And I think this is exactly what many of us in the world need right now. And now I'm going to read one more quote. Um, this is a classic one from my teacher, from Karupiche, because I always go to him when I'm looking at um, qualities. And I love this quote on tenderness. He says, tenderness contains an element of sadness. It is not the sadness of feeling sorry for yourself or feeling deprived, but it is a natural situation of fullness. You feel so full and rich as if you were about to shed tears. Your eyes are full of tears and the moment you blink, the tears will spill out of your eyes and roll down your cheeks. In order to be a good warrior, one has to feel this sad and tender heart. Hmm. So there's a little bit more that I'll read um, toward the end, but um, so I, he always brings up sadness and tenderness. Um, he has several quotes uh, when he talks about being a warrior. Um, that a warrior has to have those qualities or he's not a true warrior. Um, he, he also mentions sometimes that sense of vulnerability. So I know I'm <clears throat> attacking my teachers that I really like. I always feel that there's an availability to them. And when they touch me, there's a gentleness to their touch. It's also a lot of power, but it doesn't feel um, aggressive. And um, I have been very disarmed on the mat when I've experienced someone um, being tender with me when I'm training. It's very disarming. Um, and I think there's a huge power in that. So I would like to just put that out and see if there's any thoughts or questions or insights um, around this idea of tenderness as power. And um, kind of um, responding to Elizabeth's, what's the quality in my hands? And even if I'm washing dishes, if I could bring tenderness to it, what would that be like? As opposed to, I get the dishwasher and I put it in there. What if I could, like Thich Nhat Hanh has this thing um, that you wash the dish, you thank it for allowing you to eat or eat with your friends. And so if you were doing that, would you bring a quality of gentleness or tenderness to the washing? Um, so that we don't just reserve it for on the mat or special people, but we could bring it perhaps to our lives. And those of us who have children know the power of that tenderness. So I just wanna um, take a moment and see if anyone has any thoughts or insights or that triggers anything for anyone. I love those quotes and could you, um, could you send them or? Yeah. Can you have them somehow, they're really beautiful. Yeah, no, I think they were too. And I was uh, uh, looking around on, on the web to see um, the people, what uh, came up under the power of tenderness um, as a power. Because, you know, benevolent power is something we're focusing on this year. And your inquiry about the quality of the touch. And one of the things um, that I sensei is the quality of his touch because it was so powerful, but it was so soft and at the same time, it was disarming. And he could always move me wherever I want. he wanted me to go because the, the touch was not aggressive. If it was aggressive, then I'd maybe want to fight. And when it wasn't, 
but he had such a strong feeling of flow at the same time that my system just automatically would go in that direction. Any other thoughts on that? I see some nods, so I'm assuming you've had an experience of the power of tenderness. I'm still working on it, but there's, there's some good thoughts going on there. I, I, I was thinking about um, uke and nage roles and tenderness, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm hearing from you about what that experience may be like as nage, um, which is something I've been working on a little bit myself and not being so ego attached to like getting this thing done and throwing and being in the flow, um, which requires me to step away from my ego protection mechanism that programming that comes in to, to take control of the experience. Um, so I'm somewhere in between the two. Um, but then the ukemi, that, that's interesting to me um, because the, I, at this point in my journey or my, pro, my process with Aikido, I'm, I've been questioning ukemi again and how much do I need to offer Nage to give them enough of an experience to a offer some kind of martial intent um be operate with compassion which might be the tenderness aspect but where can you talk about uh, what that might be like as as in, uke? as uke as uke yeah well it's interesting because um there's a whole quality if i want to hold uh somebody and I want to hold them in such a way where they can't get away. If I actually hold them lightly, it's like, you know, Bruce Lee studied sticky hands for his teacher made him for two years before he let him really train. Sticky hands is that sense of connection. So if I hold someone um, and I grab them with a little bit more gentler quality here, it's much harder for them to get away. If I grab them hard, they can peel it off or pop it off if they have the strength or the, or the know-how. But when somebody's being held gently and tenderly, it's really hard. I don't know if you've ever experienced a toddler holding your finger or a baby holding your finger and you can't get it out. Like, I mean, you could, you know, tear it out, but literally you can't pull your finger away from that baby's grasp. And, and there's, so it's that kind of holding or grabbing that's, and the baby's not aggressive when it's just holding. There's just some Thing that's in it that's making that connection that's decided to make that connection and so um, that that's how I think about it it's like when I'm grabbing particularly I don't want to grab with a with that aggression I want to grab with a sense of um, I'm holding this and this part of me is connected to the grab so it, if I'm holding too tight so do this just grip tightly with your hand just close your fist and grip tightly when I do that, I can't feel this. Mm. If, if I grip a little more slowly and I hold, I can actually feel um, all the way down to my belly, right? But if I tighten my grip really tightly, I can't, I can't feel this part anymore. All I can feel is the muscles in my arms tightening. But if I, but if I grip and, you know, we're going to do Aikido grip starting with a little finger. And if you have that feeling of grip, how can you grip in such a way you can even hold your own hand where you, as you grab, as you grip, you can actually feel all the way down to your belly. And then strikes are a little more obscure, but it's the same practice. How can I strike in such a way, put the energy out where I can feel here as opposed to, I'm just going to chop with my hand or chop this way. I can't feel this part of my body but I can put power in it, but if I do it in such a way that I can actually feel this part of my body, then I'm giving more of myself to my nage, which is, you know, it's the, it, it, that, that's the generosity of uke, is that you give yourself so that nage has something to work with. I don't know, is that helpful in terms of the thought about the kind of power you want to put into your, your attack? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, pulled a lot, uh, a lot together for me. I've just been thinking about this week, so it was kind of perfect timing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, how do you hold on to something that's moving? If I hold um, more gently, um, tender would be pretty extreme, but you could bring that into it, but at least gently, then my whole body can follow and feel. 
plus I'm giving them my body. Whereas if I lock in, um, I can't, the whole rest of me doesn't get, doesn't participate in it. So I think there's a huge power in that. And um, I, what, I, uh, what I'd like us to do is um, just work with like um, an imaginary Tenshi Nage and we'll do some contrast. So um, just what I'd like you to do is on your own, just imagine you're being grabbed and then do kind of a, um, a little more aggressive move. Like you're gonna have to, however you would do it, you're gonna have to move and do it. And, and feel that sense of that you're, you're, you really want to just get the technique off. And then what I'd like you to do is switch and take a moment and take a breath and imagine that it's a baby, just like Tony said. <laughs> and um, and, and how, how would you do that move if it was a baby, like a huge baby that's six feet tall and 200 pounds or something, but nonetheless, the quality of a child. So just play with the difference because the tension Nage, everybody knows that's going to be an earth hand and a heaven hand. And so do it two ways. Do it with like you need to get the throw off and then play with it. Um, take a moment. And this helps me soften a little bit. I do this with my chest. And then how can I have the power to throw a baby that's resisting me? And what that's going to be like. So let's just take a couple minutes to do that on our own. Okay, let's come back in and see what anybody noticed with uh, shifting from being, getting it done to more of that tender or gentle quality in our hands. Sensei, um, I, I, I too struggle with this, especially like when I, when I, when I start lifting weights um, and get stronger, my the fast twitch muscles i have more access to more muscle groups let's say right and so it becomes tough to calibrate correctly but i found like you're the little you know the little exercise of doing this kind of thing and also i, I was rock climbing in joshua trees so i have like no feeling in my hands whatsoever and so like just kind of doing this like warming like getting them sort of tingling feeling was helpful too in that movement, right? To slow things down and to feel more. Yes. And, and to be able to feel it in here as well as there. I mean, Elizabeth, I think your question about what's the quality in the touch of the hands is how can I be sure that my hands are connecting me to, like if I'm holding a baby, I want that baby to feel my heart, right? So, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting that to connect inside. Nice, Greg. I like that. And this is something I learned from a Qigong teacher. And she's very funny about me. She goes, you, you too much. You must like this. Her English. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> um, but I like it. Um, the stroking quality. It's, you know, when we pet a cat or an animal, um, we get it. And this is a really helpful little thing to do for myself. It definitely makes me exhale and calms me down. And when I would do that and then do this move, I would have a different feeling than when I took the attitude, I'm gonna get this person down. Thanks, Greg. Any other 
insights or thoughts of making that switch? I thought it was quite, um, quite amazing because when I just do the technique, then my energy kind of stops at the end of the technique as well. Whereas I am more connected to myself and to a more tender quality. It's like the, the energy keeps flowing and kind of at some point flows back into me. Nice. Uh, and it, it may be that's why, you know, especially with um, Tony Sensei, as, as I wrote to you, when he threw you, he definitely threw you, but you also felt like you were held in the same moment. And I think that may have been it, that he would just follow the energy through, yeah. you know, through your body, even on the ground and back into himself, which, which has a very holding quality. I don't know. I was, I was quite amazed about the, the difference of ending the technique when you do it quick and, and abrupt and, you know, the kind of circular energy that happens when you're more connected very nice yeah i think that's a great insight that it and then it comes back it's like we're yeah. even after the throw we just keep the feeling of connection very nice any other thoughts about what it's like to bring some tenderness to the movement i find that the most challenging part of that is like Imagining my partner grabbing quickly and hard, my tendency is to react. And how do I keep that or stay connected to that quality of tenderness uh, when somebody, you know, kind of jams me? Because then my tendency is to go, woo. So what helps me is to go into it with the feeling of um, that I'm holding a baby or the feeling that I, I, I want to touch the sweetest part of this person. And even though they're being aggressive with me, somewhere in there there's a sweetness because i believe that everybody has that no matter how aggressive they are it might be just a tiny little bit but that's the part and that's the part that i want to connect to um then say in a book i read um 12 rules for life uh, by jordan peterson one of the rules was when 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 you see a stray cat try to pet them so it was like a stopping moment and you reminded me of it and i thought it was really really sort of a, a, an interesting thing because he's like you know dogs are great and they're wonderful but they're easy right they're usually happy to see you and you can pet them and that kind of stuff but now getting close to a cat and having that presence and that ability to like you know pet a cat that you see on the street that takes um more mindfulness you really have to be present for the cat because cats kind of take us or leave us. Like if they don't like your feeling, they'll just, they're out of there. Although they will claw you or something like that. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good insight. Um, and that, that's a, that's a nice like practice too. Yeah. 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 Wonderful. Tenderness, huh? So, um, uh, let's do this. If you have something in your house, uh, maybe even our bokens, we we'll, we'll, won't do the boken per se, but I know everyone's got a stick. So um, if you just grab your stick for a minute, and we're not going to do our, our ritual yet. But just it, hold it in a kind of a, just as, as if you're trying to get a feel for it. Right? And, and hold it as if you want to really uh, feel into it. And hold it as if maybe that stick has a bit of a spirit or a, some, some kind of quality. And you want to read that quality. You want to connect to that quality. Okay, now let's contrast it. Grip it kind of tightly and just imagine that you're just trying to, um, um, you're going to maybe use it to pry something open. So you're holding it tight and I'm going to kind of go in there or I'm going to try to move something with it. And notice the difference is you grip it tightly and you're going to use it as a tool. It's not a sensitive, it's not like a living thing. It's just a tool. And then you're going to do this, some kind of movement. But just notice the feeling in your chest, your legs, and your arms as you grip that. For me, it's really different. And, and now... Take a moment, take a breath, relax a little bit. Let it, let it just be light in your hands. And then once again, how do you touch it or hold it in such a way that you want to have a feeling 
what's the energy in this in this piece of wood what's the fee what's the quality of this piece of wood what are the molecules then they're moving are they are they spiraling are they moving more in a straight line what's that like and to do that i realized I have to keep a little bit of um, aliveness with my hands. If I just lock my hands like this, and we think when we do Joe takeaways and things like that, um, if my hands are locked, then the Joe takeaway tends to be sort of rough. Whereas if my hands are looser, the Joe takeaway, I often have a lot more ability to move, move that Joe around. Is if I'm trying to connect to the person's energy at the other end of the Joe rather than just take it. So there's a very different feeling of, of holding it if I'm connecting to the quality that's in this, this thing, this piece of wood, versus I'm just going to grab it and use it for leverage. I'm going to use it as a tool and I'm going to do something with it. So what does anybody notice with the, the difference um, for you between using something that you're just going to get leverage as a tool versus sort of using it from a point of view of connecting to its uh, energy. It's interesting what you say about it being a tool because I was thinking about how I would dig or something like that and I would be really loose until that moment of sort of impact and then everything would tighten up, right? And not expand that extra energy. And it reminded me of like one time I had to have a trench dug and I took some of my painters to dig the trench and they were, they were just hacking away and they only got like this deep in like all day. Right. And my plumber comes by and he's like, Greg, this isn't going to work. You need a digger. And, and he got, he, I'm like a digger. What's a digger. He's like a guy, he's a digger. And he gets me this guy and it's an old guy. He's like 60 years old. And, and that's old for digging. But he, he just dug and he dug all day long and he would take breaks and he'd be resting and relaxing on his, his, his tool and then he'd start digging again and he would go like my height deep in a day, which is super wow. hard. But yeah. Impressive. Yeah. And that's, you know, relating with the, the tool, as you say, sure, yeah. uh, with anything, whether it's you were washing dishes or something like that. And so how do we hold it? And when we work with the Boken, one of the reasons I like us to do this sort of a Lucy thing in the beginning is to get us to be more uh, soft hands with it. Because if I'm holding it hard, it's really hard to do that movement, that figure eight movement. And when my hands are more relaxed, it's easier to do this figure eight movement. And, and then I always talk about trying to send the energy out the tip of the Boken so that we're running the whole length of the Bokan and beyond as, as part of our connection. Yeah. So something that you could um, play with uh, for yourself, Elizabeth, too, if you wanted to work with quality. So what's the quality that I want to bring to working with the Bokan or a Joe? Like what's the feeling that I want to have? Um, and then I would encourage us to, to you know, check washing dishes. What's the feeling we're doing washing dishes? Because if we can catch ourselves in those little mundane, um, everyday things, we can start to bring um, a quality of our choice to how we touch the world. How we physically touch the world, but also how we emotionally and psychologically touch the world. And uh, I think like that one quote, um, when the fellow says, uh, I never feel more alive I never feel stronger than when I feel tender. I never feel more alive and worthwhile. And I think this is exactly what many of us in the world need right now. It's a very, very nice quote. So having said that, now let's um, take our bouquins and let's just do a little pract our practice with it, a uh, variation. So um, if we could just stand, do a little standing bow to clarify that. Take our book hands out and let's stand with our feet shoulders width apart and stir the cosmic soup. And as we do this, we invite wisdom traditions from all times, all places and all eons to come and support our intentions for good in the world. And then we go lightning rod to heaven and bring it into us. Oh. Nice. 
And now let's take a minute, and you can also do it with just one arm if you like, but just that feeling of um, making that the foot draws the sword back, the foot draws the sword back, so and our hands are loose. And we're just having a feeling that there's a beautiful figure eight going out. And the figure eight is generated by the feet, by the legs. And keeping the energy flowing out the tip and the hands are soft and loose <clears throat> enough to keep control, not tight. And just let it flow a little bit. Long breaths. A few more. Good, and let's just stop. Just hold our both hands for a moment and just feel that figure eight. Nice. Now let's do the more um, formal version of that, which is we're gonna <clears throat> make a yogaman strike and yoga and strike. So bring it over our heads and cut, boom. boom. So these cuts are very precise, they're very extended, but as you're cutting, you're adding more power now. Try not to keep more tension in your shoulders or your hands. See if you can really send the energy out the tip of the bouquin. What's the amount of power you're going to put in your hands? How do you hold? A few more. And hold. So it's a little bit like Greg was saying about digging for me to do this exercise because I'm cutting and there's some power here and then this is loose. This isn't tight. This is loose so that I have, and it comes around from my head and then I cut again and there's some power and my hands are a little more focused and tight. Now they're loose again. Cut, my hands are a little tight at the end. They get loose. Tight at the end, they get loose. Tight, loose, tight, loose. So there's that feeling of being able to make that shift from the end of the strike in which there's a power and then right away there's a little bit of looseness a little bit of relaxation in it so that's something you can play with the difference between you know boom putting some power into it and then immediately loosening up it reminds me of you know a punching it's like power and then you want to be soft you don't want to keep the tension there you want to punch and then soft so that you have the ability to switch up, if that makes sense. Like, you know, we don't want to, uh, and then stay, uh, it's more, and then a little bit of looseness there. So any thoughts on working with the bouquin and making that shift from a strong, tight moment to a soft, looser moment where you have more flexibility? Can you kind of get that feel, hopefully? Sensei, I'm liking the analogies to tools that, you know, it's, it's my whole world is tools being in construction and some of my best employees like really care for their tools. Right. And then some of the ones that like blow through them or have a, a tightness or a stiffness to using them or a sort of attacking, there's no finesse. So finding the finesse within the tool, whatever the tool happens to be, whether it's the Boken or, or even our hands or in any way. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And I think, you know, to Elizabeth's point, when we're aware of our hands and how they work together or not, um, and the quality that's in them, it brings a whole different way of being to how we're connecting to ourselves and how we're bringing that into the world. That's really nice. Um, so let's, uh, let's work a little bit with our declaration and our intention and do that practice. So um, whatever your declaration is, I really encourage you to say it out loud because energy organizes around what's most articulate in our system. When we speak out loud and then we do the bokeh cut, we're really energizing our intention. 
And I, I believe that was O Sensei's vision of unifying mind, body, and spirit all together. So instead of just doing a physical art, it's also a spiritual art. So um, taking our bow pens out. And, and if you can imagine something out your wall to the next house or to the street, and let's take a moment and uplift out the top of our heads and then let the energy come up from the earth and imagine there's a icky breeze coming in our backs, going through our arms and our fingers. That nice clear intention, let's all say our declarations together and then we'll make the cut. So mine is, I wish to bring courage and resilience to people at this time and send it out. Again, I wish to bring courage and resilience to people at this time. Send it out. I wish to bring courage and resilience to people at this time. Cut once, send it out. Cut again, send it out. Last one with a big key eye. Aye! Nice. Let's bring it up a little bit, a little stronger, a little brighter, a little more energy coming through us. Saying our intention. Ready, Anne? I wish to bring courage and resilience to people at this time. Send it out. I wish to bring courage and resilience to people at this time. Send it out. I wish to bring courage and resilience to people at this time. Cut once, send it out. Cut again, send it out. Last one, key eye. Hey! All right, so let's do one more. Because it's always good to do three, so let it get a little shinier, a little brighter, bring a little more through. I wish to bring courage and resilience to people at this time. Send it out. I wish to bring courage and resilience to people at this time. Send it out. I wish to bring courage and resilience to people at this time. Cut once, send it out. Again, send it out. Big key eye. Hey! Nice. So, um, whatever you can play with, with you have a bouquet or a stick or something uh, small, a shoto, when you have time to just, what's the feeling quality that you hold that with? Even when we're bowing it out or putting it down, what's the quality that we touch it with? Um, and if we can appreciate that this has some spirit and that actually everything does, everything is vibrating molecules, nothing is... Uh, nothing is dead, there's no flatlining, then we can start to relate with the spirit in all things. So before we do the breathing, let's work with a little um, ikkyo movement. I think it's just such a basic and it's always really nice um, to work with ikkyo. It's just that sense of um, sword blade. And imagine that um, someone is is grabbing a cross hand, and let's just come up and bring it down. And then on the other side, offering your hand when it comes, come up. And here, your hands come all the way down to your knees, the person is down, and change. So just imagine that that is coming, raising. Down. Raising. Let's do a few more. And now notice when you're raising, what, what moves first? So just ask yourself, what moves first when you start to raise? Do your fingers move first? Do your legs move first? What's the first movement? So for me, there's a little shift forward, then my fingers go up, and then I do the ikkyo movement. I'm imagining that coming. There's a little shift forward, my fingers go up, and I do the movement. And then later, that's much more subtle, but to, to not move with my weight on the back foot, but to bring my weight forward. Fingers come up and bring them down. Shift forward, fingers come up, down. Shift forward, fingers come up, down. 
Just a couple more. So just pay attention if you have a habit of being on your back foot, you want to get in the habit of being a little bit forward. And then the idea is the hips move slightly. And then the hand moves from that. So it's the hips are moving and then the hand moves because the hips move. What we don't want to do is just move the arms separate from the hips. So as the person's coming to us, we shift forward, hips move, hands follow. Person's coming to us, shift forward, hips move, hands follow. So the idea, as much as we can, is to initiate from the hips and then this follows through. Initiate legs, hips, and then the upper body follows through. Couple more, legs, hips, upper body. Change hominy, legs, hips, upper body. So that's just something that we want to keep practicing that we're almost all Aikido movements initiate originally in the legs or hips and go through to the hands. And so whatever qualities in the hands, we want to be sure that they're really listening to the legs and hips too. So when I'm washing dishes, am I on my heels? Am I just standing back there? When I'm sitting in front of the computer, am I slumped or am I I'm more upright and connected. Whatever the task is, can I keep my energy uh, uplifted, a little bit forward and engaged, and then let my hands unfold from there, rather than having my energy back here on my heels and then trying to do things with my hands, bringing myself forward a little bit. So that's always something good in Aikido when we're doing Boken and Joe, or in life too, that we're not back on our heels but we're a little bit forward, up and a little bit engaged into the world. So before we do our breathing, I just wanna check in to see if there's any thoughts or questions um, about tenderness or anything we've done so far. I, I appreciate the, the um, exercises. So I think during the week we can continue to work with it. Right. And the question I have is, um, and maybe next week, um, the quality of dignity. Because oh. It quickly comes up for me when, when I'm more connected, that there's also inherent feeling of dignity. So, um, but maybe I'll write to you about it. <laughs> I, I think that's great. And it comes back to Trungpa's uh, comment about, um, in order to be a good warrior, and has to feel the sad and tender heart. And I always think of warriors as having dignity, like true warriors. There's something about them that has some of that dignity. So um, what are the qualities of a true warrior? And dignity is definitely one of them. And we are all warriors. Anyone who does Aikido or tries to manage uh, skillfully in the world is a warrior. <laughs> um, I'm gonna read a quick couple of, uh, this one was a John Kabat-Zinn quote. Befriending your mind, body, and heart enables you to enact a love affair with the possible. <laughs> I just thought that was you. And then this was an interesting one about um, just a principle of water. Water can rise through the trunks of gigantic trees against tens of atmospheres of pressure. What is more surprising, though, is the faculty of a human being to rise over hatred and aggression in the world indifference and treachery towards himself and still be loving and empathetic. The faculty of a human being to rise over hatred and aggression in the world, indifference and treachery towards himself and still be loving and empathetic. And so I think that's, you know, also the quality of a warrior, how there's so much to challenges us, um, unpleasant things in the world and can we have that sense of compassion and empathy and bring the quality of tenderness, even in the midst of something like people attacking us? We certainly practice that on the mat. All right, let's do a couple of moments of our heaven and earth breathing to end with. So let's just pull the energy up from the earth, reaching toward the sky and reaching, sending it out into the world. Drawing from the earth, 
reaching for the stars, connecting out into the world, drawing from the earth to the heavens, opening to the world. Let's do one more. And let's just stand in it for a moment. And then let's have a sense of sending out some benevolent power into the world, sending to people who need support, who need a little feeling of courage. And then appreciation for our community, for our friends and training partners, for our teachers and mentors, for Osensei's vision, and for our own hearts, our willingness to be on this path together. Let's have a bow out. So thank you all very much. As always, Elizabeth, I so appreciate your questions. Any questions or thoughts or anything you'd like to explore, please shoot me an email um, about it, and then I'll do some research and look it up. Ray, thank you, as always, for hosting. Um, I come down on the 29th. Uh, so I'll probably would like to have a class on Saturday if possible. Um, or sub 20th is, um, I think, a Friday. Uh, and then we go back Sunday, so it's short. I come back on the 29th, it might, might be a Thursday. I think it's a Thursday, so I Friday, Saturday, and we go back Sunday. So just FYI, I'll be there for a quick one. And um, I'll connect to Delano and see if she can find a date or a time for me to do a class. And who knows, hopefully it'll be raining. We'll do it in the dojo, in social distance. <laughs> All right, everybody, well, lots of um, appreciation for you, lots of noble, awesome shininess and benevolent power to you. Um, have a great week, and I'll see you online uh, next week. Thank you, Sensei. Bye. Bye. Hey. Thank you, Sensei. Bye. Thanks, Sensei. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>